this point, I've put about 100 hours into Starfield. During those 100 hours, I found a variety of funny, interesting, or even just genuinely useful things. So in this video, I basically just want to share some of the Easter eggs or interesting mechanics I found without giving away any major spoilers for the game. One of the pretty cool aspects of Starfield I discovered is there are multiple avenues to begin certain quest lines. So for example, the Crimson Fleet Pirate quest line, where you could start this in two wildly different ways. The way I think most people will likely begin is via the Vanguard quest line. In New Atlantis, you could talk to a captain to become a UC Vanguard. This is just the United Colonies quest line overall. Part of the way through, as you're interacting with this captain, he's going to ask you if you're interested in also helping out the United Colonies system defense. Basically like, hey, you're doing a great job as a Vanguard, do you want to help out this other department of our military force as well? So as you start this, there's a ton of respect thrown around. You're a Vanguard member, you get some praise for taking out a Terramorph, that's one of the starting quests during the UC Vanguard quest line. Made quite an impression around here. Everyone upstairs is talking about it. It's all very above the board and friendly. Glad to have you aboard. But there's an alternative way to start this quest that is far less friendly, as during a separate playthrough for Starfield, I accidentally shot a UC guard during some chaos. Later on, as I'm flying around the United Colonies, a ship stops me and describes wanting to take me in with some special orders. This seemingly being because I now have a bounty with the United Colonies due to that missed shot. Immediately, I had to surrender a bunch of items I was taken to a holding cell and interrogated. as this would eventually become an alternative way to get recruited for the Crimson Fleet questline. Instead of being a Vanguard member who is then going undercover for the United Colonies, here I'm just a criminal. I was a wanted man and they captured me, so instead of going to jail, I have the option to help out the United Colonies and capture the Crimson Fleet pirates. It was honestly such a cool moment to see these wildly different ways by which a quest could begin, even featuring a bunch of different dialogue choices. As a prisoner, you have way more options for being mad or rude, while as a Vanguard member your choices are far friendlier. And although this is just the one example I found during my playthrough, you have to imagine other scenarios will exist for other quests in the game. And New Atlantis overall isn't the most above the board place, even though it has a very pretty landscape, one time while I was wandering around I actually found a suspicious deal going on after dark, this behind a rock somewhere. So, this is the good stuff, straight from the old. It better be for the price you're asking. This is a private meeting. Security's tight. This might be all that's here on New Atlantis. You're not with me. Uh, when it's gone. It was honestly a super minor random encounter, but it was just hilarious as a piece of world building. Seems like there is still some of that familiar crime from today happening even in our space or future. But then what I think was honestly one of my funniest moments in Starfield. At one point with my playthrough, I landed at a higher level planet. And like clockwork, an enemy ship landed nearby containing a bunch of spacers, and they were about 15 to 20 levels above me. I start working through the enemies and board their spaceship, only to find the ship start taking off. And through the window, I could literally see the process of us going up into space, which was pretty wild. Like, yeah, I'd heard you were able to board spaceships, but I didn't realize you could full on look out the window and see yourself going to space. Then as you go to space, hit a load screen, and then you're just floating around in space in an enemy spaceship. Naturally, I finished clearing through some of the enemies aboard the ship and even take down the captain, only to discover that I can't actually pilot the spaceship. My piloting skill is too low. I was facing a bunch of pretty high level enemies, much higher level than me, and as such, they have a Class B spaceship. I cannot pilot a Class B spaceship, I only can do Class A. So there I was, stuck on an enemy spaceship in space, and I literally couldn't pilot the ship. Just floating around endlessly, I guess that technically would have been the end of my character's story, although fortunately in Starfield you can fast travel. So I was able to fast travel back down to my spaceship and all went well. In Starfield, I took the trait that gives you parents, but also the trait that gives you a luxury starter home. And something that you don't necessarily realize is you have to make note of where these two things are, your parents are in Pioneer Tower in New Atlantis. 
while your luxury starter home is on Nisoy in the Olympus system. The first time you do this, you'll have quest markers that directly lead you to these two places, right to your parents and right to your home. Except after you actually finish the introductory quest for this, you don't have quest markers here anymore. So with the parents trait, sometimes your parents will leave you notes. At one point, my mom left me a note at work. I mentioned she had something for me at home. It was at that point I realized I have no idea where my parents live. Like I just followed the quest marker up to some random tower of the many towers in New Atlantis and now I really didn't know where that was. I had to run around all over New Atlantis trying to figure this out, but thankfully you don't have to, it's Pioneer Tower. And for the starter home, it's even more obscure. You have tons of systems in the game and I completely forgot which one contained my home. For outposts, there are even little markers above planets where you have an outpost place, but for some reason your starter home does not get the same treatment. But speaking of your parents, one of the funniest interactions I had throughout the entirety of the game was finding my parents at the club. On Neon, there is an astral lounge, it's the one with these crazy dancers. And one day, while I was messing about in the astral lounge, I found mom and dad who looked just as shocked to see me. Oh, I don't see what the big deal is. Well, uh, hello. Didn't expect to see you here. Dear Lord, this is so awkward. Your mother found a deal, one hell of a deal, an all-inclusive vacation package to Neon. <laughs> it's a retirement present. And, uh, well, everyone's heard about the Astral Lounge. But another really cool location where you could get some early game credits is right next to your starter home. It's actually a great way to remember where your home is, and that is the Alma Guest. This place is incredible. It's a floating casino that orbits Nisoy in the Olympus system. I thought the casino looked pretty similar to Endurance from Interstellar, although this could just be a common space station design. And inside, you're going to find a giant zero-gravity casino that is now abandoned and taken over by spacers. Zero-gravity gameplay in Starfield is simply a blast. It's truly some of the most fun combat encounters I've had. Ballistic weapons will blast you back, and you could even propel yourself with your jetpack. But this being a now abandoned casino, you can also win the jackpot. There's a little open hole you could sneak through to find a bunch of contraband, which you could later smuggle somewhere if you want to. Or there's also a lottery machine. You just need the winning numbers, and it'll pay out to you. And of course, you could find those winning numbers on a manager's terminal at about the midpoint of the ship. Overall, it's a really cool and fun location. And this was designed as a zero gravity casino. It's not like the gravity machine broke here. But it's kind of hilarious to imagine a bunch of floating people trying to gamble. Also, a separate funny moment, to actually smuggle contraband onto different planets, you have to have a secured section of your ship so you can hide it. I didn't have that for a while, and I kept finding contraband. So in my almost entirely empty player home, I had hundreds of thousands of credits worth of contraband just sitting on the floor, and I took a selfie with it. Do you remember this broken helmet? It was featured prominently in one of the original Starfield teaser trailers, but it's also in-game with a pretty hilarious feature. Right after you get Frontier, your starting ship in Starfield, you can find the helmet right on a shelf, just like it was in the teaser. I assume most users will just ignore this, as it literally has tape saying don't use, but if you do put it on, you will see that tape obstructing most of your view, and you can even faintly see the don't use written on the other side. As well, some of the space encounters you could have in Starfield have genuinely made me laugh out loud. At one point, I was stopped by Faraday's budget tours. Can I ask the first question? I'm still talking with the captain. Cindy will organize everyone into a queue. Are you sure you're up for this? This is a really fun crowd. So helpful. All right, who's up? First question. I think Bethesda did a really good job at conveying that true tour group energy with this one. Pretty sure I've been on a tour in my life with people exactly like this. And one encounter that was a bit more cryptic and mysterious, I also discovered this mysterious ship captain that looks to be in a ship that is very similar to Frontier, although this one is clearly far more aged and even looks like it's had some modifications made to it. Everyone's scrambling. It's not yet time. I don't even know if it will ever be. But hope and my pocketbook springs eternal. I really can't say as much as I'd like to. It may mean nothing, but I'm rooting for you. Sorry, can't say. <laughs> Hopefully all will make sense in time. Good luck.
I'm not entirely sure what is going on with this one, but it definitely seems like Starfield's going to have some broader mysteries, and this could be one of the more rare random encounters around that. In Starfield, you are able to discover new landing spots for planets. Earth has a variety of these, and one of the easy ones to get is by going into the mass building in New Atlantis. In this building, simply go up to the central command slash office of the president, and then in the actual office of the president on her desk, you could find a book that will give you a new landing spot on Earth. The vast majority of the gameplay you're seeing in the background right now is actually done with New Game Plus. I basically beelined the main story in Starfield, and then with New Game Plus have been doing most of the side content. I can't go too deeply into this just yet to avoid spoilers, because as of right now I don't think even enough time has passed for someone to successfully beat the main story, but what I will say is New Game Plus is unlocked after you beat the Constellation questline, and unlike past Bethesda games, just doing the main story first isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like for me, I don't personally regret beelining the main story and then doing all of the side content content with New Game Plus. Obviously play this game however you want, but I don't think doing the main story first is a mistake with Starfield, and I think a lot of people may actually prefer playing this way. And one of the other things I found super interesting about Starfield is the skins. All of the equipment items in Starfield have a skin option, despite only two skin packs actually being available right now, and like only seven skins being out for the game. Although for some reason, hundreds of items have a skin slot on them. So on one hand, perhaps they are just setting up for a truly great framework for modders, but in reality, I think Bethesda may be selling a few more skin packs in the future. Even outside of this, Starfield is listed as having in-game transactions by the ESRB, although that doesn't seem to be available just yet, and even in the end-user license agreement for Starfield, there is a mention of creation credits. This is not something found in the EULA for Fallout 4 or Skyrim. I don't have a problem with paid mods, especially if it's going to be totally optional, but I'm pretty curious as to when all of this may roll out. If a paid mod-like system is coming for Starfield, it seems like Bethesda already had plans and was starting to implement it, based off of all the things we could find around it already. But that's also kind of exciting, because it likely means official mod tools could also be right around the corner. But with that said, those are some of the notable, interesting, or just funny things I found during my 100 hours with Starfield so far. I have a ton more content coming, including other videos later today, so get subscribed. But if you are enjoying the game, check out these essential tips that I think everyone needs to know.